Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilaus and this is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube that aims to provide insights and resources to help you become a better engineer in this awesome game of Factorio. So what we're looking at here is absolutely amazing. It looks so cool. It's so weird. And it's the theme of uh, a number of upcoming Masterclass videos that I'll be doing here over the coming weeks. This is a new concept. Well, it's not a new concept, but it's a new concept for me in the sense that after six and a half thousand hours, I have uh, started experimenting with this way of building and I absolutely love it because it gives new and interesting design pram design challenges. So what I'm going to do in this masterclass video is I'm going to explain the purpose and objective why we would even do something as silly as this or as crazy as this. And then uh, we are going to go through the design parameters and then we're going to design a smelting setup according to the design parameters. So that's the objective for for this uh, this masterclass. Since this is a really nice thing to look at while uh, I explain, then I'll just explain the purpose before we dive into more of a design uh, design focus. So the purpose of this, if you are doing this, then you are in the extreme late game. You are building a mega base, and you may have encountered the, the problem in the mega base that your PC simply cannot keep up with the updates that the game needs to process. So that's a really difficult thing to optimize. And one of the ways you optimize it is to minimize the amount of entities, entities being inserters, assemblers uh, in the game. And by minimizing that and belts as well, then you have fewer things that need to be calculated and fewer things that need to be calculated means that you can build bigger before your PC becomes a flaming wreck trying to keep up with all the calculations. And it means you can run the game smoother in 2060 for a, a longer while. So if you are not familiar with the whole UPS, the updates per second uh, idea, then I have a separate masterclass covering that aspect as well. But in this one, it is uh, this, this masterclass is serving as a purpose. If you're building really big, then Here's some inspiration about how you can do. If you're not particularly doing a build, then it can either serve as inspiration for some of the things because there are a lot of interesting design parameters that we need to consider. And it could also be sort of uh, just an idea about what you could build towards. Um, I'm sure you can also build the train to train for things that are not beaconized. Beaconized? Yeah, that's a word now. But it, uh, it really comes into forefront because you can increase the crafting speed so much with beacons that it actually becomes worth it. And we're here in our test world. This is where we're going to build it. And I will use this opportunity while we are designing to go through some of the design parameters so that you get an idea about the things you need to consider if you want to start using the magics, magic of train to train. Because it's pretty cool when it works, but there are so many considerations that you need to consider considerations to consider, yeah, uh, in order for, for for this to work. So the first thing, uh, we want to make, show that, I want to show that the train here. So if you look at this, and I'll just send it up to a station, this one will get something inbound here, and that will just go to the only station that is there. Cool. So as it goes up here, I am going to get one of these here. What you can see here is that between each, you will have six tiles. That means the repeating pattern has to be from here to here. That actually means that if you want to make sort of some beacon here, then you have to build the other one here. And then this is the first consideration and also challenge for this is that you actually have to build your whole design with only four tiles. That means the stuff you have in between here has to go into this location and then you can start seeing all the issues because the next issue is the trialing if you build it if you build it here looking good so this looks pretty good right this is a good offset but we have something we want to put it into a box here and then we meant to build it here see that's no good right that's no good because now it's aligned with these beacons Hmm. So that's no good. Uh, so you can already see that. Okay, so what, what I'm saying is here, you can see over on the right hand side, it says number of effect sources, because this one is only affected by these six. If I build it here, it has now a number of effect sources eight. So you never want to build your assemblers or furnaces directly aligned with beacons, you always want them to be misaligned by one tile in either one direction. So then we get to this option. 
is this a good option? You want to unload from the train quickly so that the train can leave again. So that's good to have a, a stack inserter. And then the question is, is this enough? Well, the answer is no. Well, the answer is actually in this case, it is the answer is kind of yes, but then we are going to do here per second. We want to get everything per second. So this one consumes 2.9 per second. That's good. But you know, if we want to build this, we want to build it with the maximum number of beacons aligned possible here. Again, we look at this pattern and question ourselves, can it be tiled? Yes, it can. Good. So we tile it up here. Yep. It's exactly tiled towards the next one. So this is tiling. We can do the same on the other side as well, and then we'll get the maximum number of beacons that we can get. So this is looking pretty good. Now again, we take this part and then we get 4.187. That's what we need to get inbound per second. And that's where we get to the issue that this is more than a long head inserter can, can cope with. This one cannot do 4.187. It can almost, but almost is just not good enough. Additionally, if we talk about optimizing for UPS, the updates per second, then one inserter being active 100% of the time is way worse than one inserter being active 50% of the time because this one is not doing any calculations. It is idle, it's waiting for source item. Until it gets a source item, then it's idle. It doesn't run calculations the 60 times per second. But this one, is, if it goes back and forth all the time, then it's always active while an equivalent Stack inserter would be active maybe 30% of the time. So this, we want to avoid longhand inserters as much as possible because they are they will need more swings to get the same product across. So use longhand inserter when you need it, but we have a severe problem at this point. Likewise, we're gonna have another problem. Well, this is actually okay. We can just do this one. But the problem is that these tile on two, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you can go like, okay, well, what if I just bake it further out? It's never going to be exact because this is an odd number. This is an odd number and this is an odd number. So you can, if you add three odd numbers, you're going to get an odd number, but the spacing here will always be an even number. So that is one of the big things that you need to consider when doing this kind of design. So how do you fit it in with the spacing here is a big issue. Uh, the next thing is, Will you tile it by seven by seven here? Or you can potentially also make a design that scales by 14 so that you, instead of having one design here, you have a design that covers both. That could be the case if you want to make, uh, say, let's say green, uh, let's say copper wires for red circuits. You only need a few copper wires. So that might be an option where you put one copper wire in the middle that feeds into two assemblers on the other side. But one thing that is absolutely critical with this is that you have one train, one wagon is never mixing with anything else because this, this means that things will become inherently balanced because this one will come in and there will be exactly 4,000 that will be exactly processed here. And that'll be exactly, well, 4,800 outbound because of the productivity. Oh, actually this is 2000 inbound. So it's going to be 2,400 outbound in, uh, on the other side. So that's uh, definitely something we need to fix. The other thing is uh, that we will come back to this solving this one because it's a bit of a design part. You cannot get it faster than this. So this is outputting five iron per second. And then you start looking at what is it you need. So if you need, I don't know, 200 per second, and you want to build a iron smelter for 200 per second, then you have to figure out how big is it going to be? You can't scale this one up. Normally, if you had a design for a belt design, you would scale it up to sort of the consumes a full belt or produces a full belt. But in this case, you have to decide how long the trains are. My recommendation is either do eight or 16 wagons. More or less is possible, but eight or 16 wagons is good. I would, uh, in this case, probably make it uh, 16. But that means you fill this up and then, but the, the issue is that no matter how long your train is, you are going to have the same amount of, of time that the train loads or unloads. It's not going to load faster or slower depending on how long it is because it's going to be one assembler here. 
And that's one of the other concerns is that it'll actually take quite a while for it to to, op to uh, fill up a train and also empty a train because there's only one inserter. It's not a big problem as you think because ultimately as long as your speed is determined by the assembler then it doesn't matter if this train has to be there long or short and it'll unload as fast as possible here. There are some very important uh, numbers to remember is that this one if you go from it's called a called box to box that's what we call it if you go box to box this inserter can transfer 27 point something per second it's good to know if you go from box to do i not have belts now i do like this then it'll be 13 point something that means if you are outputting to a belt it's going to be a lot slower than if you are outputting from a box to a box. So this is box to box. That means I can unload it at 27 per second. And if we do the calculations, this is going to have 2000 divided by 27. That means it's going to take 74 seconds to unload the train, no matter how long it is. On the other hand, when it comes in here, this is going to be way worse because this is going to be 4000 because it's plates at this point divided by 20 seconds and is obviously going to be the same time so this is going to be two and a half minutes that means the train will come in here and then have to stand here for two and a half minutes while this one's just flickering back and forth just to fill up the train ultimately when it comes to calculations it's going to be exactly the same amount of calculations whether you have one inserter working for two and a half minutes or you have five inserters working for half minute it's going to be exactly the same amount of calculations so no uh, no wins losses there but it is certainly a different way of looking at it because you will you will need to say, all right, if I need 200 outbound, then one big train is not going to cut it. You will have to sort of figure out like this. This is one unit and then say, okay, if I have 16, 16 of these, then I can only get up to 80 per second. But it's of course going to take over a long time. But you could also just, um, what if, what if, wouldn't it be possible if you could... Uh, unload it as well so I'm going to put one in here and then I would like to go this part and then I flip it with the F key boom get it on that side and oops get there all right so what we have now is basically something all right so this looks good this means that this will be um, I'm just clicking random buttons here click the Q this one will be input with or this will be output with plates and this will be input with or and then that will basically be it so that means you could actually consider this times 32 your train is now imagined to be a 2 16-2 train and that will give us 160 per second outbound but it's going to come in bursts of 64,000 whenever a train comes out so again if you need whatever you need then uh, that's the 160 per second then but remember that it comes out in big buffers so probably need to build more of these we can come into something with its stackers and balances all of the uh, stackers later on but balancing train to train is going to be exactly the same so now we need to uh, to look at this uh, one other thing here is that the loading speed we did cover the loading speed of the trains so that you are aware of it one thing that i would rec recommend is that you actually have this station which is obviously going to be down here that way and keep going that's uh, probably a bad location here and i'm gonna need some huh i don't have that i will get a few fuel here yep that's enough this one go to the only one you can all right, so that's fine. Uh, yep, yeah, that's here. This two trains. Boom. <clears throat> what did I want to do with this? Oh, yeah. So what I would recommend is that you control this, which is, again, something I'll do in another episode uh, because it's very much a different, a, a different setup here. Yeah, but if you enable and disable this so that the train doesn't come in here until it can fully load, then you will save updates as well. How would that be? Well, if the train is parked here and not empty, well, I can actually just, it's much easier to show you. Look at that. Look how busy they are. 
This one now, it's rated by one at a time. And that means way too many swings because they are always, they're swinging even if they're not necessary to swing. It's very, very minor thing. But you know, over time, I think it's, uh, it's valuable to get that in as well. We still haven't figured out exactly how we want to do this. So we, uh, we need to find a, a reasonable way to do it. So the trick here, and this is a bit weird and wonky to be perfectly honest, is, well, I'm just trying to see if I can figure this out. I think I'll take this one over there. Right, so the train unloads here. You know what You know what we can do? We can actually use these fake trains and this one will be simulating that. That looks good. And this one will also be a fake train. It'll just be a fake train that delete, deletes anything that comes in. So now we don't really seem to have fixed anything, have we? What if, what if, what if, what if we use these things? What if we go from here to here. Now what the hell does that achieve? Well, it does achieve the fact that now the issue here is that the train unloads a lot faster, but one of these inserters, again, this is 27 per second. So this one plus that one will not be enough to actually get us into, uh, it'll, it'll still be able to keep up. So not a problem at all. So that works. Well, it, this one doesn't work. So we need to make sure that this one actually also work. This is the way to solve that issue. But we still have then the issue on the other side. And that one will have to be here, which is not actually symmetric. You can see here, this is now displaced. It's not flipped. So this one will now need to have the same issue over here, which means I could do something like, let's see if I can figure that out. I could do something like this, right? Mm, one, two. I could do this one. Uh, does that make any sense at all? Yeah, I think that works. No, that doesn't work. Does it? No, it doesn't. It has to be like this and then it has to be there. Yes. And I'm going to add this train over on that side as well. You will be copy paste. Let's see if it works. It will. Whether you limit this one or not is kind of up to you. I tend to not do it. <clears throat> I would, in this case, when there are two. But you see, this is not actually correct because it's not repeatable. This one should be now the same as that one. So that means we have to get this one here. And I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to get it out again here. So what I've what I've done now is I have again I've again made it, I think I've made it repeatable now. By making by using this this can actually l jump 3 tiles and this one was jumping 7 tiles. So again by that way it is working. Basically, there will only be one tr look, one inserter emptying the train. Again, this means that it's going to take 75 seconds to unload a train with one inserter. It's going to take two and a half minutes to load the train like this, but it's okay. But what we have now is, and I am going to just show here, this is going to be 10 per second. And I, if I say I have 16 trains, then we're going to get the 160 per second. We are going to test the whether it actually tiles because that's the most important thing that the, our design actually tiles in all directions. And there and here, we'll, lastly, we'll figure out how to do the power poles, but that's a good thing. So um, I think I'll take these out because they're actually not part of the repeatable pattern, but this is the repeatable pattern. And then you will see another little issue is that it doesn't tile directly here. So if you want to tile the first one because it goes in a second, seven second cycle, you have to go like this. But once this is done, then this one tiles. Boom. Brum. And we can then replace these trains. 
here, here, and here. And there. And so we have uh, at this point actually designed a system that makes, if you want a 16 wagon train, you have now uh, 160 per second. It's pretty easy to calculate because you know that uh, this part is taking 10 per second. So you can decide it however big you want. Uh, I always favor trains that are a power of two because that is easier to merge things together to two or to four or to eight, whatever you want. So I'm always trying to keep things in the power of two numbers, much easier when it comes to balancing. So what we've done, what we have learned from this and what we still have yet to learn, let's uh, let's cover that. So what we've learned is that you need, if you need to do this, you have to decide whether you are, are tiling by seven tiles or 14 tiles. This is tiling by 70, seven tiles. This part is the tileable pattern, seven tiles, which correspond to a wagon plus that spacing the link between them. We, um, we have realized that there is a problem with the spacing of train, that this will always be an even number while inserter, box inserter, and an assembler or furnace plus inserter, box inserter will always be an odd number. So you will have this conflict always, always, always between this will be an odd number and the, uh, the spacing between trains will always be an even number. That has to be addressed when you do these kind of designs. Uh, you, um, We have the part about the spacing of the trains. You can basically, if you want to make this twice as big, you can either scale it up to make the train longer or you can scale it out to make several parallel trains. My I think you have to choose a balance. So I would not want to manage trains larger than 16 wagons. So if 160 per second, as is the output or the throughput for a 16 wagon build, if that's not enough, then I would start scaling it out. And even if I was to use 150, I would still scale it out because yeah, it's just better. And again, when it comes to updates, as long as an inserter is not doing anything, it's fine. It's, uh, it's basically free in terms of uh, computing power. So that's, um, oh, right, this one has to go up because that's actually not part of the Peterman pattern. I know you've been looking at it, but yeah, that is what it is. Uh, what else have we learned? So that was the size of the inserter speed is super important as well. You want to avoid having red inserters because they are slower and they might be too slow. We have to remember that the speed from box to box is 27, but train to or belt to box or box to belt is 13 per second. So that's also super important as well. Uh, and then of course the loading time of the train might come into to effect. So this is the very basic thing. You can also just do the similar design for steel. I will just show you a design for steel that I am pretty sure I have here. Oh, this is a gamble, a gamble gamble. That is the design for steel. Steel is a lot simpler actually because it uh, does have the it does have the advantage of having two. This steel is actually quite, um, should I say instead of myself, I think it's quite ingenious, this part. So again here, what is most effective to have one red or two, two uh, greens? I'll just do that one. Or two green and so, and it's actually two green is better because they are gonna be active way less than one red. So what I'm doing here is if you look at the ratio, this one is working at taking 3.2 in and providing that 3.9 out. This one is consuming 3.875. So that's very, very close. If you take the both of them together, you can see that it's a minuscule net rate here. And that is super awesome to see that. And since this one is ridiculously slow, less than one per second, I am just choosing to use a single red to come over to overcome the issue of the, the even number here. So that's because um, it's odd number plus odd number plus odd number plus odd number plus then there has to be an even number there. Otherwise it doesn't add up with the, a total of an even number. So this case, the red one is here and it's serving us perfectly well. So that's, um, that's basically the steel as well. I will be providing the iron and the steel as part of the, the blueprint for this masterclass. They are in the description below. What we will be working on in the next one is taking it up a notch and making it more complicated where I will have several trains using the same path going in and out. And then we'll have to have to balance figuring out whether it's an inbound train, an outbound train, or it's a loading and unloading. So just 
getting that one up a bit more complicated. In future episodes, we'll get more advanced in terms of uh, in terms of also looking at stackers. So we have several things to do, and then eventually we'll look at liquids as well. Uh, oil, yay! So I hope you've enjoyed this little glimpse or the first step into the wondrous world of train to train uh, designs and uh, maybe you want to use this in your own base maybe you feel this is uh, needless or irrelevant uh, one thing i should mention in this context is the fact that uh, optimized belts have been vastly optimized lately yet i still don't think it's good enough to warrant having so many belts that if you start unloading a 16 wagon train you're going to need a lot of belts and they will not always be full so this is uh this is avoiding like thousands of belts and uh, even if belts are better than if you can avoid thousands of entities it's a good move with that we are going to wrap this one up here i hope you have enjoyed it if you have enjoyed it then uh, be sure to hit the like button hit the comment section if you want to support the channel well i do have a patreon link in the description below uh, if you want to see more factorial be sure to scream and yell and shout so i can i know that there is still an ongoing uh, interest for factorial here on the channel i'll see you guys in the next episode until next time take care and as always stay effective <laughs>